Good day, good day everyone and once again we are back together. Alright, so this morning we're still continuing with Euclidean Geometry for grade 11s. So please, if you haven't subscribed, do the right thing, okay? And by the end of this lesson, we'll would be able to do some questions on Euclidean Geometry. Let's start with the first question. Right, so they say to us in this diagram, right, they say O is the center. Now, please remember what I said to you is that the moment that we've got the center, we must look out for those radii, isn't it? Okay, so that means that OB is equal to OD, right? Those are my radii. And then they say to us, ABCD is a cyclic quad. Now, that's very important. Remember, when it comes to cyclic quads, what do we know? We know that opposite angles of any cyclic quads uh, are supplementary. That is, they're equal to 180. And we also know that the exterior angle of a cyclic quad equals to the opposite interior angle. But what else do we know? We know that angles at the same segment are also equal, isn't it? Right, so uh, that's what we know about a cyclic quad. So let's look at how we're going to uh, apply this. Now, they say to us, we've got OB and OD that are drawn, right? Okay, so um, there it is over there. Okay, so now let's look at this. They say to us, O1 is 4X plus 100. Now, note in this case, we are given this guy. They say this is 4X plus 100, right? And they give us the value of C. C is C, uh, X rather, uh, plus 34. Okay, so that's our angle C. Now they say to us, we need to calculate X, right? Okay, so how are we going to do this? I'm sure most of you are already itching to give me the answer, right? Remember O1, right, is equal to, two times the angle A, right? So we know that uh, O1 is equal to twice angle A. So let's write that down. O1 is two times angle A, right? And why is that? We know that angle at center, okay, is twice angle at circumference. Center equals to two times the angle at circumference. Okay, so there we we have it there. So that means if O1 is 4x plus 100, then in this case, it means that A, we need to just simply divide that by 2. Okay, so the angle A there would be equal to, if we divide that by 2, that gives us 2x plus 50. Okay, right. But now, remember A plus C, that would give us 180. Why is that? Remember, A plus C gives us 180. This is opposite angles of a cyclic quad, right? They are supplementary. So A plus C will give us 180. And we simply say this is opposite angles of a cyclic quad, okay? And so that means in this case, um, if we add the two, so we've got 2x plus, and uh, that's angle A plus 50. And we've got x plus 34. This is equal to 180. So all I did was just to substitute those values there. So x, uh, 2x plus x, that gives us 3x, right? And 50 plus 34, that gives us 84. This is equal to 180. Now, let's bring this matter to its closure, right? So we're going to say, right, um, if we take 84 to the other side, it becomes negative. So this is 180 minus 84. That gives us 96, okay? And if we divide it by 3, Okay, so we're going to divide 93 by 6, uh, I mean uh, 96 by 3, right? So x 
would therefore be equal to, okay, so this is, um, okay, we made a mistake there, divided by 3, that gives us 32. And that is how the cookie crumbles on this question, right? I want us to jump on to another question, ladies and gents, just to show you how to keep applying this and we'll get into more complicated questions as we go along. So let's hop on to the next question. Um, in fact, this will be the last one that we do. Okay, so but I want us to start with the question seven. I took this from a past exam question paper. Let's look at this. So they say to us, we've got A, B, C, D, with, which is a cyclic quad. Okay, and they want us to determine the values or calculate the values of X and Y. Right, so where would we start on this question? So firstly, uh, we've got a cyclic quad. And what do we know? We know that the opposite angles, right, are supplementary. So I'm going to start where we have only one variable, right? In this case, I'm going to say, right, so I know that the angle A plus angle C, this will give me 180. So that means that 5x, uh, uh, by the way, why is that? We always need to give a reason, right? So these are opposite angles of a cyclic quad. Okay, sorry, I don't have enough space there, right? So these are opposite angles of a cyclic quad. So that means I'm going to take 5x plus 4x and this would be equal to 180. So that means 9x is equal to 180. And if I want to get x, I just simply divide by 9 on either side, right? So x is 180 divided by 9 gives me 20 right? So the value of x is 20. Now, in order for us to get the value of y, now I'm going to take b and d, right? So again, I'm going to say b plus d, so please remember to show that these are angles, equal to 180. Again, why is that? These are opposite angles, right, of a cyclic quad, okay, right, so the value of B is 3x plus y is equal to 180, but we already know what the value of x is, so y is 180 minus 3x, but we know that x is equal to 20, right, so that means that y is 180 minus 3 times 20. And so in this case, we've got 180 minus 3 times 20, which is 60, right? And so that means that y is equal to 120 degrees. So that is how the cookie crumbles. Actually, you know what? Let's just jump on to the next question, right? Okay, immediately uh, so that we are done in this section, right? So they give us a question there. They say, refer to the diagram. They say, our Q is a tangent. Can you see? I'm just phasing it in, you know, phasing in these um, theorems slowly but surely, all right, so that you can be able to master them. So they say, our Q is a tangent to the circle QTSUP right, with a center that is O. So, uh, please, let's remember to note our center right there, okay? So, that means that if I'm looking at OS, OS would be equal to um, OQ, right? But, please keep in mind, ladies and gents, so that means that QS is a diameter, right? Now, why is, is that important? So, that means in this case, if I'm looking at this angle, this would be a 90 degree angle. Why is that? These are angles at same segment. Okay, so please keep that in mind, right? Now they give us um, PT, right, being a straight line. So remember when I said to you, when we are given a straight line, so they are trying to tell us either that we will use 
uh, exterior angles of a triangle or even sometimes vertically opposite okay so please keep in mind uh, we said that in our previous video right uh, if you haven't watched it please uh, go back to watch it every time they give us uh, tangents we know uh, uh, rather not tangents but uh, uh, radii we know we need to mark them and make them to be equal right and in this case they're telling us that's a straight line so it either exterior angles of a cyclic quad exterior angles of a triangle or vertically opposite angles right or even angles on a straight line okay so we're going to uh, do that okay so they're giving us angle uh, pts equal to 40 so they've shown it over there right so that angle is equal to 40 and they give us uh, sqt which is this guy over there being equal to 50. they say find the size uh, find with reasons rather the size of the uh, lowercase letters a to e fill in uh, the answers in the table below okay we don't have the table right but what we will do is try to get those answers as uh, much as we possibly can right so let's start with a right so we know that angle uh, qts is equal to 90 degrees so it's that entire angle there right that uh, is uh, stq or you can say qts so we're going to say, well, we know that QTS is equal to 90 degrees. That's angle at semicircle, right? So that's angle at semicircle, all right? All right, so now in this case, but we know that uh, QTS is made up of or rather let's say a QTS is a plus 40 okay so in this case that means that a that would be 90 is equals to a plus 40 so that means angle a is equal to 50 degrees okay so we've got the value of a right so let's go on um, to finding the next angle all right now can you see we already have this guy being equal to 50 degrees right uh, and in fact this makes these two equal so how would we find angle b look at this right you remember they told us it's a straight line so angle b would be the exterior angle of triangle of that triangle okay right so that would be the exterior angle of that triangle and what do we know about the exterior angles right of a triangle they are equal to the sum of the opposite interior so the exterior angle of a triangle is equal to the sum of the opposite so you go to the one next to it so you go and sum those two together, right? So when I look at uh, B, angle B, right, would be equal to angle Q uh, plus angle T, okay, or plus A. So angle B is equals to angle, uh, let's call it uh, SQT, right? So that's SQ t um yeah sqt plus angle a right but why is that okay we say these are the exterior angles on a triangle okay right so angle b would be equal to we already found the value of a and sqt it's given as 50 so this will be 50 plus 50 and that will be equal to 100 okay so we've got the value of b right so let's find the value of c now ladies and gents once again right 
um, when you look at angle C, right? So we've got a cyclic quad over there, right? So our cyclic quad, this guy is a cyclic quad. All the vertices touch the circumference of our circle, isn't it? So we've got our cyclic quad. So we know that the opposite angles of a cyclic quad now, th which means if I look at that angle, PTS, right, as well as angle C, which is PUS, that would be equal to 180. So let's write that down. Okay, so PTS, so PTS plus PUS is equal to 180. But why is that? These are the opposite angles on a cyclic quad. Okay. And then I know that uh, PUS, uh, so PTS is 40, okay, plus C is 180. So that means that C is equal to 180 minus 40, which gives us 140 degrees. All right, I hope that makes sense, guys. Right, so let's go on to the very next one. Now, how would we find angle D, right? Now, remember, we've got a tangent over there. We were told that it is a tangent, ladies and gents. And you know that uh, in this case, we've got the tan chord theorem. So this is the tangent and this is the chord. So this is the angle between the tangent and the chord. It will be equal to the angle that is opposite that chord. Okay, right. So we know that D and E would be equal, right? But firstly, let's find angle D. Now remember, we also have another special um, you know, theorem. It says a line that is drawn from the center, right, will be perpendicular to the tangent at the point of tangency, right? So which means that angle SQR, the one that I've highlighted in green, that entire angle is 90 degrees. So let's start with that, right? So angle SQR, is equal to 90 degrees, right? But what's the reason for that? We know that this is what we usually call 10 perpendicular to radius. Okay, right. So that means that 50 plus D is equal to 90 degrees. And so that means that D will be equal to 40 degrees. Okay, I'm sure you can see how then we can relate D and E, right? So we know in this case, to, so to find angle E, we're going to say, right, there's our 10 chord, right? The tangent and the chord, right, will be equal to the angle on the opposite side. So D is equal to E, right? Which is equal to 40 degrees. What's our reasoning for it? That's 10 chord theorem. And by the way, guys, please remember that 10 chord is always a favorite with uh, examiners. I'm not sure why they like it so much. And I'm sure uh, you guys have other ways in which you, can, you could have worked this out. Okay, uh, please uh, have a look at it again if uh, perhaps you are confused. But that is how the cookie crumbles. Really, it's been a pleasure being with you guys. And I hope that uh, you will continue to subscribe to our channel. And of course, uh, our lessons are very much available at the center, uh, the Mlungi Sinkosi Maths and Science Center, okay, uh, where you can reach us. Uh, we'll have the WhatsApp number even at the um, description of this video and every other contact detail that you need. Otherwise, from me for now, I'll see you guys next time. Shop, shop.